Aloha mai kakou. Um, mahalo for having me. Uh, TEDx Manoa. I probably feel a lot more comfortable and less nervous if it said TEDx Waimanalo or something, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay, we may do. Um, you know, there's a phrase that we always talk about, you know, whether you see it on the news or when we're in the mainland talking to other people from Hawaii, lucky we live Hawaii, you know, and that's true. We're lucky we live Hawaii. But do you think Hawaii feels lucky that we live there? or we live here. You know, we always tell our friends, hey, lucky we live in Hawaii. You think Hawaii is telling, as a group of islands, telling Samoa, hey, Samoa, <laughs> lucky we get people living on us, you know? <laughs> I don't think so, besides the obvious reasons. But um, the facts are, it's, it's really not as pleasant, you know? Since the year 1800, we lost 31 species of Hawaiian birds. And you say, ah, it's the, you know, 1800, that's 200 something years. Well, 200 something years is a long time. However, the Hawaiian Islands are over 70 million years old. So from Kilauea, that's erupting now, all the way to the Emperor Seamounts that's subducting under Japan, the oldest seamount that's going under Japan is over 70 million years old. 70 million years ago, that seamount was where Kilauea is. And so 200 years, that's really nothing. I can't even explain how fast that is. That's like, you know, not even that. Like, I, I can't do it. Um, wait. Let's see. Po'uli. Uh, I say it's first discovered, but it's actually rediscovered, you know, because it's the first time that us modern Hawaiians have seen it in 1974, or it's 1973. But I'm sure our ancestors knew the Po'uli very well. Unfortunately, by the year 2004, it had already gone extinct. And when I was in college here at UH, uh, there were three left. Um, unfortunately, those three were out of each other's ranges. So they never ever got a chance to see each other. And they were trying to bring them together and make one nice big party, but they all went back home. <clears throat> oh yeah, oh, so much fast. Uh, Galapagos, Shmalapagos. <laughs> um, I only say that because I'm jealous of the Galapagos, because Charles Darwin decided that, you, you know, you know Darwin, eh? the guy from Kali, but <laughs> Charles Darwin um, went to the Galapagos. He had an opportunity to come to Hawaii. Instead, he went to the Galapagos. And he made a, a big deal about the finches that are on the Galapagos. However, our Hawaiian Manu had way more specialized beaks and characteristics and lifestyles um, than the Galapagos finches. So if only he came here. And this picture just shows some of our native finches that all derive from a single common ancestor, each having a specialized beak. Unfortunately, almost every single bird on this picture is now extinct. You know, minus the EEV in the upper right hand corner and the Apopane right below that and the Akohe Kohe. Yet, most of them are endangered, whatever is left. Um, oh yeah. So, kahuli snails uh, on Oahu. You know, these things are beautiful, beautiful snails. And I say kahuli versus all terrestrial gastropods. You know, all of the, imagine when you go outside into your yard and you see those big African snails and you see slugs. Uh, we see those all the time. Our ancestors saw kahuli, you know, and the problem with, um, you know, the kahuli versus all of the other snails is that, you know, African snails in our yards, they produce, they reproduce really quick. You know, they lay hundreds of eggs in their lifetime. Our kahuli, they only have one offspring every year. And it takes three to seven years for them to become mature enough to even start to reproduce. Now, it's not one cartoon or anything, but look at that little baby kahuli. That's like the, the cutest thing ever. <laughs> you know, you can't even draw something that, that cute. You know? and, uh, and what's neat is that they're actually born live. They're not born, they don't come out of an egg and then become one snail. They come right out of the mama's puka, one little snail already, ready for grind. So. Um, 
and they were so cute and so pretty that we pretty much collected all of them. And it wasn't too long ago where we could go back in the Manoa Valley and find a ohi alehua tree with hundreds of kahuli on them. Now, you cannot go hiking and see thousands of ohia and not find one, you know? Uh, we had 41 different species. We only get eight species left, and every, every single one is uh, on the endangered species list. So, so what happened? So despite the reproductive limitations that our kahuli have, you know, in the case of the kahuli, um, there was other factors that also came into play, uh, including, uh, let's see, are we not moving now? Next slide, please. <laughs> uh, we introduced species into Hawaii hoping to fix a problem that's being caused by another species. So in the case for snails, you know, in the agriculture business, snails, not good. They eat everything. So how are we going to fix that? Ah, we're going to bring in something that would naturally eat that snail. Right on. That sounds good. Except little Hawaiian snails taste way better than big African snails. And what I've also well, come to find out is, you know, the Jackson chameleons. Jackson chameleons are now a large consumer of kahuli. And what makes Jackson chameleons so dangerous is that they climb up in the trees where our last kahuli are. But yet they still find them inside. Uh, you find shells inside of the Jackson chameleon's stomach. So if you're ever driving on the Like Like and you see that guy on the side of the road with his stick collecting Jackson chameleons, throw that guy $5 or something because he's doing a really good job for us. <laughs> but the introductions didn't start recently. You know, we have, with the, when, when Polynesians first discovered Hawaii, we've already started to introduce threats, including the Polynesian rat, which loves kahuli. Um, but we're going to add in the, we're going to add in the mongoose to take care of the rat. But instead, unfortunately, that mongoose is eating an apapane. And, you know, we've learned from our mistakes, so now we do a lot better job at trying to, you know, do biocontrol. Yet, the birds, they need a lot more than just a place to fly. They need a place to live. And, you know, Hawaiians came down, yeah, we had to clear land because we had to make food and we had to eat. Um, and we still do that today, except the picture that we have on the left, which is agriculture, which is good. Unfortunately, that's all coffee, and most of that coffee doesn't even stay in Hawaii. So we need agriculture that is meant for Hawaii, for us to eat, not to export to other people to eat or drink. And uh, we'll get there. But yet, we always say, oh, but I still see plenty of trees, you know, plenty of Hawaiian trees. We're in Hawaii, you go outside, you look outside the window, you see plenty of trees. And everybody, a lot of times, assume that they're Hawaiian trees, just like me when I was growing up. But I like everybody to take a look, uh, a look at this list. And these are plants that I grew up with, thinking that there was Hawaiian, you know, thinking that they had a spot in our, you know, in our culture and our history. You know, today they do, probably, because we've had a lot of them. But our culture wasn't built on these plants as we know of today. Um, you know, including, sorry, Pakololo, yes, unfortunately. <laughs> Ka'u oranges, sounds nice, but that's just oranges growing in Ka'u, you know? Um, Pikake, sugar plums, I love going to Kauai, and I guess I illegally pick sugar plums because you need a permit to do it. <laughs> uh, what else we got on here? All kind of stuff. Uh, gingers, you know, the only Hawaiian gingers technically are Olena and Avapuhi. Every other ginger that we have in Hawaii is recently introduced. Avapuhi Melamele, we got plenty of nice Hawaiian songs that Sorry, this one is, it's a good thing that we're making lays out of the ones that, that we don't necessarily want up in the forest. Um, and this is a whole nother list of plants that we often associate with being Hawaiian. I just went to the Philadelphia Flower Show and they had a big exhibit about the flora of Hawaii and was anthuriums and proteas. <laughs> so um, I even have loa'e fern on there. Loa'e fern, depending on which island you're from, is not Hawaiian, but we've denied it today. But there is a fern called Lawa'e uh, on Kauai. Every other island, that fern is known as Pe'ahi. And it's not the Lawa'e that we're familiar with today, the one that's growing out of my car fender at the moment. Um, Pe'ahi is, is actually much more rare 
than the Loa Afern. Loa Afern that we know of today wasn't introduced into Hawaii until 1919 on the island of Maui. When it comes to real native Hawaiian plants, plants that came here with the birds, came here floating over in the wind currents, floating over in the ocean currents, today we have about 1,500 different species of native Hawaiian plants. Of that number, 113 have already gone extinct. 400 are on the endangered species list. And 20 species only have one individual plant left in the wild. Now, that's kind of shame. So where do these plants live? These plants live where we live. They live in the lowland dry forest. That's the, the lowland dry forest have the, the largest biodiversity of plants and animals in Hawaii. Um, over half of the island's landmass was the lowland dry forest, of our state's landmass was the lowland dry forest. And today, less than 175 square miles remain of lowland dry forest, and none of it is pristine, none of it is intact. So what does this mean for Hawaiians? Well, just like the plants and animals, our culture is endemic to this land. And if we lose our surroundings, which help develop our culture, we get pushed over the edge to the point where we lose our cultural identity. And this picture is kind of a play on all kind of stuff, but the only Hawaiian plant in this picture right now is the new. Maybe the banana, but chances are that's not a Hawaiian banana. <laughs> and without our culture, who are we? Practitioners, but why can't we just be Hawaiians? Instead, we've got to be practitioners. That's like telling one little boy, because he rides skateboard and rides bike, he's one little boy practitioner. <laughs> we just like be Hawaiians. But what if it, well, everybody else that don't care about the environment, don't care about Hawaii, trust me, there's people like that that live in Hawaii. How does the lack of, of what, our, what we have naturally affect everybody else? Well, fortunately, we always get tourism to hold our economy down, you know? But it's not Waikiki, it's Saipan. Looks like Waikiki. This is Indonesia, looks like Royal Hawaiian. This is Guam. This is Okinawa, and this is Taipei. All of these places replicate Hawaii's natural landscape, which is what originally brought people here. But now everybody can go every place else for cheaper. So even that's in threat. We can change this by restoring our land through our landscaping and bringing back the plants that should have been there. We can transform man-made places and spaces into habitat. We can even turn hazards like these water hazards on a golf course into habitat. At this golf course in Kaneohe, at Clipper Golf Course, there's every species of endangered wetland bird now living there. We can re-landscape our lowland dry forest where we all live and turn all of this yellow, which is vacant dry forest, back into this green shaded area through people's houses. Imagine if every house uh, in Hawaii had an ohi alehua in it. It would change a lot of our, of our dynamics. And don't be scared for grow lehua. You can grow lehua anywhere. It used to grow everywhere. <clears throat> but why stop there? Don't stop at the landscapes. Let's just change everything. This is a stream in Waimanalo. I'm from Waimanalo. Uh, Waimanalo means potable, drinkable water. Where's the water in that first picture? You can't even see them. We, let it, we just let it go. But by taking care of it, we can change it. And from there, no water, now we get water. We had 400 oopu in that one small little section. On another stream in Wamanalo, once we got out all of the bad plants, put in the good plants, we had 16 alai ula, endangered species, come into an area just like that. This is kupikipiki o, black point. They had 33 birds. Uh, we went in and did a small little restoration. Over the next two years, we took that number up to 177 birds. And if we build it, they'll come back. Mahalo.